Welcome back to A20. In the previous section, we have seen the relativistic Doppler effect. And now we want to study how light, in this case, a monochromatic plane wave, transforms under Lorentz transformation. In other words, um, you know, we have, for example, a, a distant star emitting uh, light at a specific frequency. And the question now is how do we observe this light when the light when the star is traveling away from us or towards us. So here you see our monochromatic wave, um, plane wave. Um, we have an amplitude A and then just a simple cosine which is a function of x, y and t time. This is the solution of the wave equation and we have already seen this part of the p sets but also discussed in class. So the wave is characterized by so-called wave numbers in x direction and y direction. Um, the squared sum, the square root of the squared sum is the so-called wave number. The frequency omega is equal to two pi f, where f is the frequency and omega is the angular frequency. And if you divide the angular frequency by the wave number, we get the speed of light. Similarly, we can multiply the frequency in the wavelength. Okay, so as the first activity, I will ask you to now <clears throat> see that how does this solution, how does this specific wave transform under Lorentz transformation? As a reminder, we have seen that the equation which governs how this light propagates is invariant under Lorentz transformation, but now we want to investigate what happens to the wave itself. Okay, so we have to, you know, investigate this specific solution and Lorentz transform x and t. And I, I just do this here in this equation. So you see that now we have um, as part of the cosine kx gamma x prime plus beta c t prime plus no, no change in y direction as we uh, look at the Lorentz transformation x direction and then we have the transformation of the time axis. Okay, so now this looks very uh, cumbersome or complicated, um, but we can try to re-find the very same characterization of the wave as we had before. How does now the transformed wave number look like? How does the frequency look like after Lorentz transformation? And so we want to identify the individual terms kx prime, or we, we label kx prime as the parameter um, we find here in, in the solution, in this Lorentz transformed solution. And we do the same for omega prime. And you find the solution here. So now there's this angle cosine I, <clears throat> I defined as the angle with respect to the line of motion. Um, omega prime is now the baseline frequency and omega the one which is detected. That's just a matter of um, changing the direction of, of uh, beta uh, with a plus and minus sign. But if you use that de definition, we can now discuss the result. So as part of the discussion, we can look at the specific case where the wave is moving towards us. Okay, so uh, theta is equal to zero and beta is positive. In this case, omega is larger than omega prime, omega prime. And so the frequency is going to be higher. So the detected frequency is going to be higher, blue shifted. So if we have a situation that a star is moving towards us and emitting light, the light is detected by us, maybe by our eyes or by a telescope, that light is going to be blue shifted. It's going to go to higher frequencies. The opposite scenario is where theta is equal to 180 degrees or and beta equal to uh, greater than zero or the other way around. We could have defined this also as theta equals zero and beta negative. In this case, in this case, um, omega is smaller than omega prime. So the frequency is lower, meaning that the light we observe is redshifted. And therefore, this, this term redshift is a measure of whether or not the source of light is moving towards us or away from us. And the larger the redshift, the higher the velocity is of this object moving away from us. So we can define this redshift as the relative change in frequency, omega prime minus omega over omega, or we can define one plus z, one plus the redshift as omega 
prime over omega, which is square root of one plus beta over one minus beta. All right. So if you now observe the stars in our galaxy, and you can do this, for example, by its specific spectral form, there's a specific spectral lines, lines of specific frequency, which we can observe from stars as they are in certain distance from, from our solar system. And if we do this, we basically see all stars being redshifted, meaning all stars are actually moving away from us, which is a measure of the fact that the universe is expanding. 